أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا سرّات المستقيم سرّات الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المقدوب عليهم ولا دعاء عليهم كل هو الله أحد الله سمت لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يش كله كفوا أحد this is the blackboard aka kukushunamo where we speak truth to power now, in every traditional African home, there is a blackboard, and every time this blackboard rests on the fire, there is something some shows cooking. Today, we have something excellent to serve you. We just pray for the power of the Almighty to descend on us so we can cut and go through. Remember, we don't talk politics, we talk patriotism. And we are in the service of God and country. We normally don't like to criticize, but if we must criticize, we would only criticize to build and not to destroy. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kuku Shodomo, and my name, Black Rasta. Hear me now. Now, the very first thing I want to talk about today is entitled, Kwesi Ahoy's Raw Truth. Who is Kwesi Ahoy? Now, Kwesi Ahoy belongs to one of the Ahoy's. Those guys who supposedly are controlling the NDC. Now, my brother, my sister, the NDC was founded by these Ahoys, Rawlings, and some other people. The Ahoys are a solid pillar when it comes to the National Democratic Congress, the NDC. And everybody knows that. Hey, my brother, my sister, interestingly, Kwesi Ahoy was born in 1946. He was born in the Gold Coast and not Ghana. He's been quiet for some time now, maybe because his party is in opposition. But he said something that is so important to us as Pan-Africanists and at the same time as people who are supposed to be patriotic to our motherland. Hey, what has the Ahoy man said? Work on Ghana states for foreign goods. If you want I 1D, 1F, that is one district, one factory, to succeed. Hear me now. My brother, my sister. We have said it time and again right here in the Blackport. That hey. Until we work on the attitudes of our people. We will be pouring water in baskets. Remember at independence. Kwame Nkrumah after acknowledging the fact that we are now independent and a free people. He also said. That it was time for us to work on our attitudes. True? Remember when Nkrumah made it clear. To everybody. In Ghana and outside Ghana. The newly born Ghana. That we had to work on our attitude. Nkrumah was a visionary. Hey. All the leaders that have come into this country. One thing they probably failed to do. Except Kwame Nkrumah was to deal with our patriotism, our attitudes. Nkrumah pinpointed that right from the very day Ghana was born, on the 6th of March, 1957. Listen, you can provide all the social amenities in this country, provide electricity, provide water, provide free housing, provide free everything. The people are going to break it down and spoil everything because the attitude is terrible. I'll tell you a utopian story. Hey, there's a Jamaican artist, his name is Busy Signal. He made a song. And he was imagining what would happen if uptown people left uptown and went downtown. 
And downtown people also left downtown and went uptown. Now, uptown and that town, very simple to understand. If the rich left their rich area and went to the poor area, and of course, the poor people also left their poor area and went to the rich area. Let us practicalize it in Ghana. This Ligon, bring the people from Choco. Let everybody from Choco leave Choco and come to East Legon. And let everybody from East Legon relocate to Choco. The first thing that is going to happen is attitudinal problems. How? The people in Choco would arrive right there at East Legon because they are not used to 24-hour power. Now they have 24-hour power. So they will switch it on night and day. Even if the sun is up, it is there. TV is on. Everything is on. Hey! My brother, my sister, they will run the water dry because they are not used to getting good water. They've been deprived all this while. So now that they have it, they want to overuse it. True or false? It's like a hungry man going to a party. He's not used to eating something sumptuous. And he gets it. He would eat until his belly busts. Uptown people are going to try and deal with downtown. Now the rich people, when they get to Choco, they realize that there's no electricity. They realize that there's no water. They are going to try as much as possible to fix the electricity because they are going to be, be uncomfortable, fix the roads, fix that and fix that, whilst Choco is busily destroying its legon. That's what is contained in the song. Because they are not used to both conditions. At the end of the day, what is going to happen? My brother, my sister, downtown is going to be improved and uptown is going to be destroyed by the people who have moved from downtown to uptown. That is what we are talking about. Attitudes. Imagine removing all Ghanaians and sending them to a country like England and bringing all the people in England to Ghana. After one year, switch them back again and see what you will see. England is going to be brought down. True or false? People are going to steal cables. People are going to steal electricity. People are going to waste water in England. And when the people in England come down here, they realize that this is not working. That is not working. That is not working. Because they are not comfortable with this kind of life, they will fix it so it can work for them. Am I making sense? My brother, my sister, this is what we're talking about. Attitude. How did the people of England work on their attitude? Their leaders played a very solid role in that. Are we all not human beings? Why is that some people have terrible habits and attitudes whilst others have at least some good ones? It's the same thing Kwesi Ahoy is talking about. Hey, in Ghana, we look down on any product that comes from us. Shoes made in Ghana are low quality. We already judge the product before it even churns out of the factory. Any product from Ghana is nothing but useless. I remember when we were in school, you would wear a shoe. I remember when I used to go to KJTR and buy KJTR made shoes. If the moment I wore this shoe, they would start shouting, Matreko, Matreko. Say, what is Matreko? See, the shoe you are wearing is called Matreko. It's an imitation. Hey! Quality shoe! Somebody would even see you and say, Oh, your shoe is looking so nice. Uh, how much did you buy it? Then you tell him the KJTR price. Say, ah, is it made in Ghana? They say yes. Then immediately he will change his mind again. And yet, Matreko, my brother, my sister, attitudes. How many people are sponsored by the government of Ghana to go and improve on their knowledge? And they feel that Ghana is not good enough for them to serve. They leave the country and go elsewhere. That's the attitude Akwesi Ahoy is talking about. One district, one factory. The people working in the factory, are they ready to work for Ghana or they are just working for themselves? You will parade the streets with all the goods. Made from one district, one factory, and not one soul is going to buy them. That is why sometimes I get so critical of the president. If I were president of this country, I would never wear a suit. If I were president of this country, 
I will never wear anything made outside this country unless we don't have it in this country. And even with that, we have to try to fix it. We can have everything, but we can have a lot of the things. And it will be understandable if we use things that we don't have. After all, it's cohabitation. Does it make sense? My brother and my sister, let's get deeper. Kwesi Ahoy says, one district, one factory would only be a farce, a fleeting illusion, if we don't work on the attitudes of the people. How many people wear Gucci and Gabbana? How many people hold Sony or some other product that is foreign and people hail them? iPhone 50 has come out. Everybody wants to have it. Yet, RLG has been able to fix up something. Hey, no matter how beautiful and how efficient it is, we look down on it because we don't respect ourselves anyway. How many Ghanaians were last killed in Libya? How did the nation take the news? When Ghanaians are killed in any countries like animals have died, our leaders don't care. They should die. They would make noise for one day and wait for another set of Ghanaians to be killed. They make noise again for one day and everything is gone. Hey, if one American dies in Ghana, the whole of America would make sure that they descend on Ghana until they find out who killed that one American. If one American pet, like a cat, makes a mistake and then is strays out of America and comes to Ghana and dies, America would demand that that pet be brought back in the next business class flight to America. America would send veterinarians and doctors to come and make sure that that one cat is alive at the time that it leaves Ghana. True or false? Yet our citizens are dying in Ukraine. It takes pressure to push the president to make sure that this happens. That we bring the people down. All these things are about the attitude. True or false? How many people realize that, oh, this is a Ghanaian. And he has achieved something outside. And we are behaving as if a Ghanaian is not supposed to be able to achieve this. So the whole country comes to a standstill. That a Ghanaian has achieved something. And for that matter, nobody should sleep. Yes, it's enough to clap and say, oh, well done. But do not overrate what we can do. Same time, don't underrate us. It's like I go to school and I make a 50% mark. And I come home and the whole village is out there to celebrate me. Because nobody from the village has been able to even make 40 we are forgetting that our village has the same capacity and energy to compete with all other villages. But because of mediocrity, we pamper mediocre performances. So we will remain mediocre forever. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's that good to pat people on the shoulder and say they've done well. All I'm saying is that do not pamper mediocrity. Our attitudes must change. Nkrumah said it right at independence. If you have leaders who do not respect the people, how can they respect the products of the people? You want to hear it again. If we have leaders who do not respect the citizenry, how can they respect the products of the citizenry? Love me. Love my cat. Hey, my brother, my sister. Kwesi Ahoy has spoken. We are a people who love foreign goods more than we love anything. If we go out there to buy milk, where was the milk made? Oh, made in China. Oh, good. That is better. The milk that is made in Ghana is useless milk. The milk, my brother, my sister, that is made in my village in Pesingpe, uh, Tumu, Dolin Buzong, is useless. My brother, my sister, as it stands right now, until we open our eyes and deal with our attitudes, we will remain slaves to every other person. We would continue to worship mediocrity. And one district, one factory will not make us any sense to anybody. 
Am I making sense? Am I making sense? My brother, my sister, dash it away and let's look at the next thing. Now the next thing, my brother, my sister, I want to look at is something that I've entitled Nigeria's Bloody Holiday of Pentecost Mass. Nigeria's Bloody, oh my God, have mercy, Holiday of Pentecost Mass. My brother, my sister, we woke up yesterday to some really terrible news. In Nigeria, a Catholic church busily celebrating the holy day of Pentecost immediately got attacked on the state of Nigeria. Bombs were detonated. Explosives were flying all over the place. And they Attackers, terrorists went into the church and opened fire on unsuspecting worshippers. At least 50 people were shot and killed in cold blood. My brother, my sister, 50 people at least were shot and killed. Bodies were flying all over the place, body parts, blood. Flying all over the place, splattered on the walls, spilled in every corner. My brother, my sister, it was a gory scene. Now the priest and his assistants were able to escape. And all the media houses around the world have reported. Look at writers. At least 50 killed in attack on Catholic Church in Southwest Nigeria, and that's a medic talking. And read, gunmen attacked a Catholic church in southwest Nigeria during mass on Sunday, killing at least 50 people, including women and children, according to a hospital doctor and media reports. Several Nigerian news outlets said gunmen had fired at worshippers and detonated explosives at St. Francis Catholic Church in the town of now the identity and motive of the attackers not immediately clear my brother why would a man want to take the life of another when i say that religion has done more harm than good to humanity people don't understand now it is said that the motive of the people and the identity of the attackers not known but in nigeria over the last few years is all about religious violence. The last violent attack that we had in Nigeria, where a young girl was slaughtered in cold blood, maimed, stoned, and set on fire. It was all because of religious utterances, which we covered in the blackboard. I will not be surprised to hear that this other attack on a religious organization is religiously inspired. Religion that is supposed to bring peace, love, and unity. Religion that is supposed to let us come together in oneness is rather preaching divisiveness. Religion that always preaches peace and love. Muslims will meet you and say, Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of the Almighty God, Allah, be on you and what do you say wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh yes may the peace and blessings of god allah be on you too after you say peace and blessings of god be on me and i respond same way you turn around and you bomb me and kill me you say you are a christian you love your religion that Jesus Christ came to bring peace and unity. Yet you are so intolerant. Wherever you pass, you look down on other people who do not belong to your faith. Who are you worshipping? That's why Bob Marley said, if you wake up and you quarrel every day, then you say in your prayer to the devil, I say. How many of you remember? Anytime I talk about this, tears run down my eyes. I have to control myself. 
great people. Now, these 50 people who were slaughtered, who don't even know, some of them could have been presidents. Some of them could have been great leaders who would lead us out of our frustration. Some of them would have been revolutionaries to help us fight against corruption. The canker of religiosity. The canker of intolerance. Today, we empathize with the people of Uwu in the Ondo state of Nigeria. You have become victims of attacks. You have become Matthias. Buhari has come out to condemn the killings. Buhari has made it clear that it is nothing but a senseless killing. But to condemn is easy to do. How has the government of Nigeria put in place solid measures to fight terrorism? Why is it that the Nigerian government is not able to provide security to every religious organization and every gathering in Nigeria? Is it not possible to do that? That there should not be a church activity or a religious activity without security. Can we not do it? Yes, I understand that we live in Africa where there are more churches than schools. Where there are more churches than even human beings. But I think that in the same vein, we'll be able to provide enough security at least to keep some of these things. I'm sure if there was even one policeman in this church, they would have been able to curtail the number of deaths, true or false. Now, religious organizations, the Catholic Church, some of your young men, couldn't they have stood century? One pastor or prophet is going to preach. 600 people are following him and all of them are saying, Papa, 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 uh, God bless you, God bless you, Papa, and then, Papa, 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 Papa. None of the 600 will stand outside there and watch and see if any predators are coming. They all want to wear suit and follow the so-called man of God Papa, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Ha, ba, 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 ba. Ha, Papa, Papa. Some are lying on the floor for them to step on, yet nobody is ready to keep the gates. Am I making sense? How can you have a religious meeting and some of your members are not ready to keep the gates? I am sure that if St. Francis Catholic Church had at least five people keeping the gates, they would have been able to blow the alarm quickly. So some of the worshippers could have escaped in one direction or the other. Am I making sense? If there's a Muslim meeting, it could be in a mosque, it could be time for prayer. Could we select some of the men so that they would stand sanctuary? Because we don't have enough policemen to do this. Can we be police ourselves? Can I tell you a story? Please, can I tell you a story? In the days of the Prophet Muhammad, when they went to war, you know the Prophet fought a number of wars. Hmm? He had the Battle of Badr, the Battle of Uhud, and so on, the Battle of Handag. I remember this from history. Hey, in one of the battles, see what the Prophet did. You know when Muslims are praying, they don't want anything to distract them. Even if a cow is running around them, they will continue to pray. Alright? You can talk to them, they will never talk to some Muslims would like that, but it's not accepted in Islam. Hear me now. You know what the prophet did? He divided the soldiers into two or more. First group come and let us pray. The rest stand sentry and wait off. Ward off all atrocities coming around us. He didn't ask all of them to come and pray. And nobody was watching. Can we learn something from this? Today, Muslims don't do it. When they are going to mosque, everybody's in the mosque. Nobody stands out to watch. Allah will watch. Mm. Christians go to the church. If there's anybody watching at all, 
They are watching over the body of the prophet or the body of the pastor. They are not watching over the whole church. Am I making sense? To the people of Owo, St. Francis Catholic Church in Owo, on those states, we solidarize with you. We feel your pain. Those who have lost great Matthias in this senseless attack, we pray that the Almighty Father touches your body, your mind, and your soul and replenish what you have lost in one way or the other. May the souls that went home, may they have solace in the bosom of the Jesus Christ that they worship. My brother, my sister, the Pope himself has spoken. The Pope is crying over this incident. Why should it happen to us? Terrorism at all, what is it? Is it religion that is causing terrorism? Or there are individuals who themselves just want to be violent, but they are using their religion as an excuse. Barack Obama has an answer, but in the interim, this is the black pot, aka Kukushunomo. Woyo! This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. Now, my brother, my sister, it is most interesting. Hear me now. Hey. This is the Black Pot, and it's live on Pan-African TV, live on Ghana Web TV, live on Black Empire TV, live on our YouTube page, Black Empire Media, and our Black is spelled B-L-A-K-K, -K, is also live on Loud Silence TV where we speak truth to power. My brother and my sister, follow us on social media and remember to subscribe to our YouTube page and click on the notification button so you'll be reminded to watch us Monday to Friday, 4 p.m. sharp, Ghana time. The next thing I want to look at is what I have decided to entitle Arrogant President Rants. Arrogant president rants. Hey. All right. So let's talk. Follow me. Follow me. Come along. Now, how many people know John Benjamin? Now, John Benjamin, who was a representative of the British right here in Ghana, the British High Commissioner. Now, he was a very good friend of mine. Very good friend, very, very good friend. You can see us in photos. In fact, when he came to Ghana, he followed me straight away. I didn't even know it was him. Then later I got to know that, oh, this is the high commissioner who has followed me on Twitter. So humble. I said, wow. So I responded and said, are you truly the high commissioner? Because this was the first time I was experiencing something like this. And then we met. Oh, we had tea together and spoke nicely. From that time, he became a very good friend of mine. I mean, regular, you know, conversations left and right. And I realized that he had a passion to see Ghana also. I mean, move out of the doldrums. We met in England, you know. And yeah, we spoke about Ghana, you know, spoke about me, spoke about what we could do to help the country move up. Whilst he was here, he said so many things about Ghana. Some of them were quite controversial. He put them up on Twitter. Other times he pulled them down. Sometimes Ghanaians were offended. Other times everything was okay. John Benjamin was known as one of the most vocal 
high commissioners we had in this country in general. He made a lot of enemies, but he made a lot of good friends, 20 fold or maybe a million fold. When he was leaving this country, it was sad for all of us. I didn't want him to go because he was a good friend, humble and good. Hear me now. Most of the time you will see, you know, him quarreling with people on Facebook who had made uh, some utterances that were not supposed to be made. People knew that we were close. No problem about that. So when he was leaving, he invited me and I went and performed. Everything was okay, nice. This is a diplomat. Listen. A diplomat. He is not supposed to interfere in any country's internal activities. He is not supposed to make utterances that are seen to disturb the country's peace. All he's supposed to do is to be in his country. And whatever he noticed, he might probably write that and send that to his country. Now we got to know about this only through Wikileaks, most of us. Do you know that diplomats, whatever they see in this country, that they think is worth nothing, they write and report to their country's diplomatic service? Now I will tell you something. Hear this. Nana Akufuado, before he became president, Wikileaks reported that there were some people who said that Nana Akufuado was arrogant and even smoked pot. You know what pot is? Not my black pot. Ntampe. Watch this. And this is my joy online. This is not black rasta. Wikileaks. Nana Ado, arrogant, smokes marijuana. Ntampe. How did Wikileaks get this? I'm just trying to take you into the diplomatic service. Now, when you read the story under this, it says that a diplomat spoke with Kwesi Pratt. And who is Kwesi Pratt? Watch who Kwesi Pratt is. Kwesi Pratt is a renowned journalist of the Republic of Ghana. He speaks sense. I love this guy. He researches and comes out clean. Of course. Yes, a British High Commissioner or an American whatever spoke with Kwesi Pratt. And Kwesi Pratt allegedly told this diplomat that, hey, Nanado smokes marijuana early in the morning. Watch this. And this is from Ghana Web. According to Comrade Kwesi Pratt Jr., the respected publisher and editor of the Inside newspaper, Nana Akufu Adu, did not just smoke a lot of the illegal herb, but smoked early in the morning to get high always. According to the latest leaks of diplomatic cables from the U.S. Embassy in Accra, when questioned about persistent rumors of Akufu Adu's alleged cocaine habit, Mr. Pratt, who was uh, very fair to the MPP candidate, admitted that he had personal knowledge of the candidate's drug use, but that it was not cocaine. Hallelujah. My brother, why am I bringing up all this? When diplomats meet you, be careful what you say. Hey, they might not go out and say it because they are not allowed to do that, but they might write it down as Wikileaks, you know the head of Wikileaks, right? Julian Assange. You know him, right? The white-haired Julian Assange. That's him. Now Julian Assange is right now in trouble because he has released a lot of secret cables of some different countries, especially America. Some of these conversations that diplomats have written and sent out to their bosses, their countries, that they represent in different countries. You understand? My brother, my sister. So Wikileaks believes that everybody must have access to information. It declassifies secret information. You understand? So he was able to hack into the cables, secret cables of so many diplomatic, whatever, 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 and leaked out this. Kwesi Pratt allegedly said, Nana Kufu Ado smoked a lot of pot, according to this report. And early in the morning, a cloud of smoke surrounded him 
as if he was angel Michael. All the smoke around him. And if you went into the house, you didn't need to ask, where is Nanado? Just look at where the cloud of smoke is. According to the report, you saw it. It also came out that he was arrogant. My brother, my sister. So they have to find a way of dealing with the arrogance. My brother, my sister. And when you read further, in fact, find time, get into WikiLeaks and look at some of these things. They had to deal with his arrogance. So Nanado decided to come into power, playing the humble Nanado. Would we'll sit in the trotro with you. Eh? You see that? Nanado said what? A narcotic breakfast. Watch him. Nana Ado's narcotic breakfast is all talking about the pot smoking early in the morning, according to WikiLeaks. Now here, yeah, he will sit in the trotro with you, drink the caliper with you like you do, even if it will make worms in his stomach. Because there are some people, apart from a petition, any other thing that they drink, Fanta, Coca-Cola, will brew worms in their stomach. True? All right. So this is Nanado drinking calipo just like you dressed like a muslim when was the last time he dressed like this again when did he ever dress like this again when did you see him again sitting in the trotro with you when did you see him again after winning power drinking calipo like this with you no the next one we saw he was in the plane huge plane eating lasagna and drinking choices drinks what point is Black Rasta making? In an interview with uh, Oketechi Frifa, I mentioned that, oh, you know, I went to the you know, British High Commissioner to play a certain concert with Wiala and uh, Dab Seb, Dark Sabeb. And Nanado, I've told this story several times. I had greeted other people whilst performing, you know, an artist performing. Yeah, you want to be able to go and shake hands. You want to interact with the people. Before he was president, he would easily interact with you. But once he became president, people slapped my hand and then whatever. Hey, my brother. And I mentioned also that John Benjamin mentioned to me after the show, he approached me and said, oh, Black Rasta, I am really sorry about the arrogant behavior of the president. Maybe I should never have said that. You know why? Even if it was true, Your information, the source of your information should never be revealed. Some people approach you and give you information and do not want that information out. They'll tell you, hey, when this information comes out, I'll deny it. I'm not saying that's what happened between me and John Benjamin. As he stands, he didn't say it. I put it in his mouth. I am the one. WikiLeaks. And millions of other Ghanaians who say Nana Ado is arrogant. If you believe it, you don't need John Benjamin to say yes. Nana Ado is arrogant now. Do you need John Benjamin to tell you that he's arrogant? I have apologized to John ben Benjamin. I think that I behave childishly. Why should I mention people? Especially when it comes to classified information. That's not journalism. Journalists are supposed to protect people. You understand the point I'm making? So my brother, my sister, Nana Ado assistance right now, I have said it time and again that he's arrogant. Even Samini who sang for him, somebody just told me that, who sang for him and praised him, he was performing on stage and wanted to hold Nana Ado's hand. They slapped his hand like a dangerous snake. <laughs> I will not be the cause of a diplomatic war between Ghana and Britain, never. I am not the author of confusion, but the author of peace and unity. Do you know what I've heard in my ears? Do you know how much classified information I've heard from several sources? It will be most unfortunate and childish if I start cheeky, cheeky, cheeky. Nah, that wouldn't make sense to those who felt. Uh, you know, some way, I apologize to you, not to the president. The president is arrogant, more arrogant than Satan. I've said it time and again to John Benjamin, enough respect and salute.
to the fans out there who felt a little because it came out that i said what that john benjamin had said in the news it came out yes that nana arrogant nana nana i almost said nana arrogant akufu that it came out like that in the news in the headlines that i said that john benjamin said nana ado was arrogant watch it john benjamin described akufu ado as an arrogant person that after i was attacked and this was on a Kate chair show, as I said, it went viral. I looked at it and I told myself, ha, who, ha, ha. John Benjamin didn't say it. It's me. John Benjamin was not even nowhere close to me. I was standing alone and imagining that Nanado is arrogant. Now it's left to you to say whether he's really arrogant or not. So early this morning it came out. What's the next one that came out after this? Watch this. John Benjamin never called Akufuado arrogant. I lied. Black Rasta. Hallelujah. To God be the blessing. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. This is the black pot, a.k.a. Kukushunomo, where we speak truth to power. In the interim, when we return, I'm going to be looking at Ejapa. I'm also going to be looking at Bernard Boy. I'm also going to be looking at the flogging in Wa. Until then...
Yeah, no. Yeah, but my sister Paulina, any day after. Emre, you can't cancel me now. You better free. Abu's, Abu's chapter. Hey, babe. Sister Paulina, we're reading glasses here, Chini. Now we're moving Hebrew. Hey, madam. Madam, we're going to need. Tina, take her hand, her back capsule. A drawing, Tina, but what to say me? We read the Amen share glasses. See clear. Hey, Nukro. Tina Tet Hayan Herbal Capsules. A hey, full supplement for good vision. And not recommended for children below 12 years. Asthmatic patients. Pregnant and breastfeeding mothers. I draw you, baby, at work. For Tina Tet Herbal Show. Hey, now go away. Yeah, go away. Tina Tet Hayan. See clear. is a Jamaican. Yes, I'm a Jamaican. I was born in a little parish, a beautiful little parish called Clarendon, outside of Kingston. Everybody knows Kingston, but Clarendon is where I come from. I am a singer. I am an author. I am a, um, a songwriter. I am a poet and, I'm a, and I am an actress, right? I do the whole, I've been doing it for many, many years. And so um, basically that's who I am. I am uh, anything art, everything art. That's me. You think art and you think Diana. Yeah. <laughs> I do reggae music, I do inspirational music, I do cultural music, I do um, gospel, if you call it gospel. You know, I do, I just do uplifting, clean music, even the 12 year old can listen to it. Or, you know, or if the adult, if you feel like it needs some motivation or so. The kind of music I do will really, you know, motivate you. And that's basically what I do with reggae predominantly. <laughs> Okay, so the inspiration behind Bed of Roses is this. I actually, you know, bad to bad, as we say in Jamaica, there's that little stigma that has always been going on that, you know, you know, men are, most men are not good men, and you don't really have good men, especially like if they're poor and they can't take care of you. Women have two hands and two feet too, so you know, crippled, you know, you don't necessarily need somebody to take care of you. What you need is a man with a good heart, who loves you and who will work to you, so, with you so you can build an empire. So, Bed of Roses is really in the defense of men and so also to really rewrite the narrative that if a man is poor, he can't take care of and that's no good. It's not good for you, which is a lie. You understand? So there are lots of men out there who don't have a lot of money, but they, you know, they are good and upright men. You know, they, they just want someone to work with them and someone to motivate them. And so that song was really, um, you know, to celebrate good men who don't necessarily have a lot of money. <laughs> Give me a firm foundation with no sand. Better Process is available to the public um, on our platform called 16 Bars Multimedia. So on the website it will be that 16 B A R S M has in Mary M has in Mary dot com. So that is 16 Bars M M dot com. Definitely. I am available for live performances any day of the week. So you can contact me on, first of all, you can reach out to me on my Instagram as Empress Diana, and my Diana has two N's. So that's Empress, which is D-I-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. So that's Empress Diana, that's my IG. And um, also, you can also, you know, send me a, a, a link or something on our YouTube. Our YouTube is the same name of our website, 16 Bars Multimedia. We have lots of um, work there. Uh, you can reach us there, and also you can um, you can reach us at 16 Bars MM at Outlook.com. So that is 16. This time it's the word. It's spe all spelled out. 16 Bars MM at Outlook.com. And if you choose when you go on our website, which is the same 16 Bars MM .com, um, you can go to the contact page and send us um, a, a message. You understand? Usually we respond within a couple of hours. 
All right. Um, so that's basically it. And I'm sure at the end of um, this, you you will have a number somewhere to contact us. All right. So that's that's it. That's what I do. And you know, keep the music locked. <laughs> yes, sir. Bless. Nice little ranch down the orchard. Well, if I bet you where we plant, me now go hungry. Come and say, don't you hear me? We now we plant it. Give me a firm foundation. Go on, skip a judge. Blackpot, Coco Show, Rama. Well, if I was an in a hoche. Music coming from Diana Wright. Beautiful piece of music. I love this one. Beautiful piece. I remember to follow her on Twitter and follow her on, you know, YouTube and, you know, all the channels. 16 bars. Remember, this is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kuku. Show them where we speak truth to power. Remember, we are also sponsored by Tilted Natural Health Center, the house of quality about medicine. Also sponsored by Hot and Spicy Catfish. Sponsored also by, by uh, Chick Luxury Beauty Home. I want to say salute to all of you. All right, so the next thing I want to look at very briefly is what I've titled Ejapa insulting to Ghana. Now, what's Ejapa? We've talked about this and we've gone in depth about it. Now, Ejapa was a certain deal that the Ghanaian government, led by Nana Akufuado, tried to rub into the eyes of Ghanaians. They wanted to sell the minerals of this country. To the highest bidder, my brother, my sister, and deny us of our rights and the next generation, next, next, next generation's rights to the minerals of this country. Now, my brother, my sister, this was thrown out of parliament the very first time that it arrived. Even the IMF and the World Bank spoke against it. In fact, international donors were so angry. To hear about Ejapa. And we all thought it was all over. Now they have repackaged it. And look at what the finance minister is saying. That he is still bent on bringing Ejapa. Watch it. Ejapa. He says my mind is still on Ejapa deal. That's the finance minister. More headlines. Same finance minister says. A Japan deal revived. We mustn't drop it. And this is Ufuriata talking. So what's the Ejapa at all that they are bringing back? The first one, they said they were going to give out our major mines in this country to investors. And these investors would own this for about 25 years and beyond. Anything that came out of it, 25 years. They will give us some money. Now they went back and said all they want is half a billion American dollars. 500,000 American dollars. I beg your pardon. 500 million American dollars. Half a billion American dollars. And monthly, annually, they would have some benefits also coming. But the big chunk of the money is half a billion American dollars to the Nana Akufu Ado government. And finance minister says that is what is going to help the country develop. We need it. And what would the country lose? The country is going to lose all its mines presently and future mines that will come up. Anywhere any minerals are discovered later, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years in this country, we have no right to touch that. Whoever can give us half a billion Ghana cities now. I beg your pardon. Half a billion American dollars. Why do I keep talking cities, cities? When you are so patriotic and talk about cities, it's difficult for you to switch and talk other currencies. Even our budget here, we talk dollars. Yet we expect people to be patriotic when we are all dollarized. Let me be quick about this. So half a billion American dollars and you take all the mines in Ghana presently and those that will be discovered later. Our children's children would come and have no right to touch any mineral in this country because some wicked and criminal minded people sat back and decided to sell the minerals of this country to charlatans 
and criminals. Anybody who gives Ghana this amount of money to accept this deal is a criminal. It's a slave master. How many people would this thing benefit? Maybe it will only benefit Gabi or Tridaku. Benefit Osafu Mafo. Benefit the finance minister of Oriata and maybe Baumia. Maybe Akufuado himself. Because he's the president sitting down there to allow this thing to happen. The president should come out and say, no, this is slavery. But no, he's sitting down and allowing them to. So when we are calling those who are selling this country, the president must be mentioned too, true or false. My brother, my sister, how much do we make from our minerals in Ghana every year? Watch this. 7.1 billion US dollars. My brother, this is 14 times more than what they want to sell everything to the highest bidder. We might not get all 7.1 billion US dollars, but that's what we get from our minerals. How many minerals? About five minerals. Gold, diamonds, bauxite, and so on and so forth. 7.1 billion US dollars annually. And this is 2020. Two years back, this was what we got. 2021, we got 7.2 billion US dollars. At the end of the day, we get royalties and some other amount. We might not get all this figure. Why do we want to kill our minerals? Your guess is as good as mine. Dash it away. Let us look at the next thing. Now, the next thing I want to look at is flogging is primitive. Why do you want to flog people? The Bible says, uh, what? The Bible says what? That spare the rod and spoil the child. And some people have taken it so much into their everything. The smallest thing they want to flog you. In what? Look at what happened. People were tied to a stake. And last, and we all saw the videos making the rounds. Watch this. Tied like animals. Look at this guy. Because he had sex with a lady in privacy. And there was a video of the sex that leaked. The lady was also whipped. In fact, the sad news is that these people were even beaten up before they were taken to the chief's palace. So they got double beaten. Here they whipped them. 20 lashes each. And now the young man has a problem with his eye. Watch. While flogging victims, male lover fears losing eye, are losing sight. Lady unable to go to work. My brother, why should we whip people? Just to give pain and then they will go? What happened to the farm? What happened to the dirty gutters? What happened to corruption in the area? The stealing. We are in a country where we accept and condone corruption. But we are not ready to accept sexual immorality. What is good for the goose must be good for the gander. Flogging is primitive. And I say it time and again. Even the GES has said that before you flog a student in Ghana, you must write the reasons. Seek permission from the headmaster. The headmaster would agree with you and tell you how many lashes you should give and what portion of the body you should give the lashes to. Even the GES. In America, there's no flogging. In Japan, there's no flogging. In England, there's no flogging because it's primitive. Several other African countries are not ready for this primitive thing. Let's look at it. I pray that the boy's eyes get back to normal and is able to do his things. Yes, they might have misbehaved. Have they been able to investigate that enough? We are waiting to see what will happen next. Finally, Benna Boy. You know Benna Boy, right? Benna Boy is a Nigerian artist, but he's not a boy. Yes, Bernard Boy, not a boy. He's a man. Bernard Boy was in Zimbabwe to perform. He performed before a field up stadium. That show had been postponed or delayed for two solid years. Now the ruling party there is called ZANU PF, Mugabe's party. You know, ZANU PF coming together. And look at it. Bernard Boy refused ZANU PF offers of money to wear scarf. He refused the president's party, the ruling party. Offer, their offer to wear a ZANU-PF scarf 
to be in support of that party. He refused the money. In Ghana, we have artists who are performing for parties. We have artists who take money. They are boys. You want to compare yourself to Bernard Boy. Bernard Boy might have boy in his name, but he is a man. He should start calling himself Bernard Man. He's left Zimbabwe with a lot of respect for him. But we are still here running after politicians who will not respect us. To take money from them and perform for them. What a shame. How much money do you want at all? You compare yourself to Bernard Boy. You see what Bernard Boy can do? On that note, this is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Black. Hey, did I say Black Rasta? Kukushu Nemo. And my name, Black Rasta. To such time when I and I buck up again, job bless, no less, no stress. Black Rasta say what? Whoa!